this video I'll present to you a couple of interesting demos that involve rotational dynamics one is I'll call the magic hand demo which I may or may not have demonstrated for you yet well in any case here's the analysis it includes a can with an outer and inner diameter this inner diameter is actually the can itself and so there's something on the outside of the can rubber bands something to increase its radius just a little bit there's going to be a string wound around the can itself which is this inner diameter here and let's do a free body first of all mg straight down no torque about the point to contact p obviously because the line of action goes through that point which is now going to be considered the axis of rotation right at that point and we have normal same thing no torque about p because it goes through p also now torque is equal to r cross f and it's a perpendicular part of f so let me go through three scenarios three different application angles of the force basically pulling on the string in different directions so the first one i consider this dotted line shows the direction along which the string is going to be pulled so here it is there's the force and perpendicular to that line of action and the point of rotation is a non-zero quantity and there it is our perpendicular so there is a perpendicular radius between the line of action and the point of contact about which this can can be considered to rotate so f is going to produce a counterclockwise torque and i want to say counterclockwise it's not the vector direction it's just the practical direction so it's going to try and make this thing spin around counterclockwise so if you pull on this in this direction this can because it produces a torque here that's a counterclockwise torque will try and make the can move to the left so that's hopefully understandable now the magic let's consider another direction this one here we're going to call that f prime now look at the little radius arm produced between the line of action f prime and the point there it is little r perpendicular prime little jigger right there well consider if you put a force here with respect to this point is trying to twist it around like this it's a clockwise torque it's gonna try and make this whole can move to the right which is a clockwise direction so that's pretty interesting just by changing this angle from here to here we reverse the impetus of the rolling direction and that's how that can be made sense of and one more let's put the line of action right through the point so f double prime produces no torque because there is no moment arm between the line of action and the point of contact so hopefully that was an enriching little description of the magic can and now let's consider the magic falling platform so we have a little board pivoted from one end and we're gonna let it free fall onto the table pivoted about the left point here we start at some angle phi it's length L mass m now this is going to produce an acceleration at the end of the board as you can imagine there's other accelerations along here that are less right because this is a rigid body the angular velocity at any moment is going to be constant for all particles and the velocity then is going to be omega r and the acceleration the angular acceleration is is constant as well and so the acceleration is alpha r so anyway the greatest acceleration is at the end and because of that we can get some interesting things going on here so a is alpha l the length sum of the torques is i alpha so let's go ahead and write the sum of the torques now as you remember to remember that the the center of mass really the center of gravity which in the uniform gravitational field will be the center of mass is the point about which we can consider gravity acting now that's at the halfway point 
0.5 L. So that's where mg mathematically effectively acts. So mg times the perpendicular part of the radius arm, so that's L over 2 times the cosine of phi. So there's the torque, and that's equal to I alpha. I is the moment of inertia pivoted about the end, which is 1 third ML squared times alpha, which is A over R. All right, so we have some cancellations. Oh, I like that. And so we have 1 half G cosine of phi equals A over 3. And thus, A pops out as 3 halves G cosine of phi. Now, if you look at this, you realize that the acceleration can actually exceed g provided phi is small enough, right? Cosine of phi needs to be small enough so that this exceeds g. But at the same time, that acceleration is not directed straight down. So it's not directly in line with gravity. But when this angle is small, then it gets closer and closer. So is this pivot, is this board, has it got a small angle? The acceleration listed here is almost vertical, and the angle is minimized. So indeed, we can just see that the vertical part of the acceleration can exceed g at certain angles. And what I'd like to do is consider, really, what angles that actually happens. So what can be demonstrated here is if you put a ball on top of here, do you actually see the ball separating from the platform? And at what angle? And you can play around with this and have the ball be caught in a cup attached to the board that is actually higher than the board. So anyway, that will be the demonstration part of this. So who wins when you let this fall? And to answer that, I think we already know the answer. The board, the board at some point should exceed g and then accelerate away from the ball, namely providing a gap between the ball and the board. So at what maximum angle will that happen? If this angle is really large, certainly that won't happen. But as we get smaller and smaller angle, then that acceleration eventually exceeds g. So at what maximum angle does that happen? So we're really looking for... Uh, you know, this part of the acceleration, the downward acceleration. So looking at the geometry, this is phi, and we have a right triangle. So we're going to solve for A vertical. And that is A cosine of phi, the A that we just discovered. So A cosine of phi is G. That's the condition. When does the vertical acceleration equal G? So that's 3 halves g cosine of phi, that's a, times cosine of phi, so a cosine of phi. So 3 halves g cosine squared of phi, g's go away, and we have cosine squared of phi is 2 thirds, cosine of phi is square root of 3 over 2, and we get our answer. So there it is, 35.3 degrees. When we are less than 35.3 degrees, there should be a separation between the board and the ball. And hopefully that will be demonstrated.